Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming. It's, it's really so great to be here. Our presentation for today is Calm Level Linux to the Rescue, and we'll do a lot of demo and some coding. And the whole presentation will be held in Jupyter Notebooks, and it's available on GitHub. So if you scan those QR codes, you can have a link. To, you can go to, to the code and uh, repeat the steps that will follow. Uh, about us, we are Machi and Pavel, we are software engineers and uh, the committers of Open Lineage and Marquez, which are open source project. We'll start with a, you know, a couple of questions at the beginning. Uh, why should Lineage be important to you? So Lineage is just the ability, a process to track how the data flows over time. And uh, we are on the Berlin buzzwords and the buzzword of the recent year is data mesh. And actually, I was prepared a simple puzzle. I hope you see it. If not, I can zoom it. So uh, there's a Python method that given a string, gets rid of the last character, and gives capital S uh, for it. And what's the output of this method on data mesh? Uh, a data mesh. So actually, a data mesh without lineage is just a data mesh. A data mess. So data mesh is about autonomous teams being able to deliver their data-driven products while being closely coupled with the rest of the organization. And uh, to succeed, they need to have some tools. They need to understand what are the upstream data sets they are using, who is producing them, and they need to be aware of the downstream, so who consumes the data sets they produce. I mean, I've seen that many times, uh, someone having the great idea to rename the column, drop a column, or do whatever on a column, because it seems really reasonable at that place. And then the email correspondence getting more and more recipients, and days and days long trying to find out why is everything so wrong, yeah? And with data lineage being a graph that shows the dependencies between data sets and jobs within the organization, uh, you could figure out quickly, but what's just more important, uh, you, um, it doesn't have to happen, yeah? Because the, con because the producer of the data is now, knows the downstream and can predict the potential uh, errors. So uh, that's why you need lineage, and why do you need open lineage? Because perhaps there are alternatives. So if your organization uses a single technology to process the data and it has some lineage feature, then perhaps you don't need it. Uh, but it, the point is, it barely happens in reality. So in most cases, organizations do have uh, multiple different technologies within the stack to process the data from SQL, Sparks, Flinks, DBTs, wherever. Uh, and the lineage only makes sense if it gives you a holistic view of every data being processed within an organization. So once you get a graph that merges, that, uh, that allows you to traverse from, for, through all the data sets, it makes sense. Uh, so that's why you may need an open lineage. And open lineage is just a standard uh, for uh, lineage information. And why is it cool? Because there are different parties that take part in this uh, producing of lineage events and consuming them. So you do have analysis tools, schedulers, warehouses, SQL engines, and perhaps data catalogs that uh, consume it later. And without having a standard, you would have had N-square integrations. With a standard, you just need each consumer, each producer, to be able to speak open lineage, and each consumer to be able to understand it. Uh, so that's why uh, it's good to have a standard. And what makes Open Lineage so great? Uh, you know, it's the way we collect, we generate these events. So events, we do it on the fly directly when the processing is being taken. And you know, it's like trying to figure out from the photo when and where was the photo taken. You can give it a try, but actually, if you implement it within the camera, you can do it do it much better. Uh, there's a tiny disadvantage. You'll just need to implement it within each camera. And the best you should have is a standard because this will allow you to reuse the information. Uh, so how does it apply to Lynch and SQL? I mean, imagine you are trying to build a Lynch from the logs and you encounter select star from table uh, SQL. 
And if you are parsing the logs, then the star means nothing to you. What we do is we generate open lineage events directly when the processing is being taken, which allows us to get to know what does the star mean. So if you do have an airflow operator that's triggering some SQL queries to some SQL data warehouse, uh, we can give it another call to find out what the star means and what's the metadata hidden behind it. Uh, open lineage is just a spec. So it's a JSON schema that uh, tries to describe uh, what are the run state updates uh, of the processing being taken. And uh, so it's a JSON schema that tries to describe as best it can uh, the processing being done within the ecosystem. So it, con it's consists, it contains, contains like four major blocks, some information about the run, some information about the job, and some information about the input and output data sets. There's some information we call facets, and Open Lineage as a standard uh, provides a lot of useful standard facets, like for instance, for a data set, it's useful to contain some schema information, some ownership information, some information about documentation, data quality, assertions and metrics, if your job is a SQL, uh, then a SQL query uh, is also worth to being contained. You can include it with a SQL job facet. If your job is a script, then some script location or a link to it is also useful. Uh, when it comes to run facets, if your job fails, then it's really worth to have some error message and possibly a stack trace. Uh, additionally, you would like to know what was the processing engine and its version and so on. Uh, there are plenty of ready-to-use facets, and actually you can easily extend it with your custom one. So the JSON schema just allows you to bring additional properties where allow you to send anything you want. Recently, we've added the ability to not only uh, inform about run state updates, but the ability to send data sets events and job events just to let Open Learning Standard express uh, metadata about data set and jobs without a context of run. And so it's just a standard and uh, how can you make use of it? So, uh, so yeah, we do work on uh, plenty of connectors, uh, especially for Apache Airflow, Spark, but also DBT and Flink that we'll cover later on. And the simple uh, deployment mode, it's, yeah, let's uh, configure our connector to send the events to some backend through HTTP or through Kafka. You can send it to Marquez, which is our reference backend that allows you to visualize the lineage graph, and it really has a great REST API, which allows you to programmatically uh, really get real nice things out of that. And the complex uh, deployment scenario is with using FluentD. So send your, even, send your open lineage events to FluentD and let it resend it further. And I think it's really great because the one great thing about FluentD, it allows you to copy an event and send it to multiple backends. And actually, there's more than, uh, there are at least few really, really good use cases uh, where open lineage events may be really valuable. So uh, there are things like data catalogs that would like to be, to be notified about data set changes and being produced. Uh, there's Marquez, which allows you to visualize the lineage graph. Uh, you may also would like to uh, build some alerting system on the top of it. So there are lots of uh, really useful scenarios uh, which you can develop based on the open lineage events. And uh, Actually, column lineage, which is a subject of this presentation, is just a facet, yeah? So it's just a facet that tells for each input-output field, it tells what input fields were used to produce it. So, uh, yeah, it's just try to describe how the output field was created, what input fields were used, and possibly uh, contain some other information on what was the function? How, how, how did inputs got translated to the outputs? Yeah? The identity is one-to-one -one copy, which is easy. Uh, the more difficult things are like uh, hashing or masking. So imagine you do have uh, personal information somewhere, then it gets masked, and you would like to be able to you know, uh, see just the graph where the data is still uh, personal. Yeah? At some point, it stops, 
we would like to be able to make the distinction. Uh, okay, we do have a Jupyter, which means we should have some demo. So, uh, first we'll have a look at the Marquez. So, Marquez is our reference backend. It's, it has a really, you know, shiny UI that allows you to uh, see the graph of the dependencies. And if you want to play around with Marquez, go to GitHub. It's an open source project. There's a button, try in Gitpod or something like that. And it shows you something similar to that because it's some food delivery demo which shows you the graph. And actually, you know, the graph is shiny, but there are, really, uh, there are really great things that you can do through the API, uh, which is even more uh, great. Let's start a Spark job with some uh, extra six parameters. So we'll define an extra listener, uh, which is an open language listener that will get notified about SQL being started, finished, and so on. And it also tells what to do with the events. Let's send them to Marquez. And uh, yeah. Uh, assume we do have some two tables and we would like to run uh, a query that uh, joins the tables, does some group by, uh, and then we uh, save it to, uh, to another uh, table. And once we do it, I hope it will happen. We'll see the new node with the within the graph. Yeah, the new node is here. Uh, so we see a new data set, Top Berlin Restaurants. And uh, yeah, if we go to the JSON browser, which is not that cool, we'll see the column lineage telling us how the certain uh, fields within the new table got created. Yeah, so this one got created from the restaurants table and the field name. Uh, we do have something like orders, and this one got created from another table, order seven days. And this is great. So the great thing here is that, uh, you know, when you instantiate your Spark session, you just need to provide, you need to inject the open lineage listener. Then the whole thing is collected automatically. And Maciej will tell you why, because he told me not to tell it now. And I remember it, Maciej. Uh, so what we're doing, really well, and what perhaps open in open lineage stands for, is that we're doing in, in a cross-platform way. So I've shown you an example of Spark job uh, that uh, produced a new node in the graph and some dependencies. But what I can do now is I can reuse the same data set and save it into the Postgres. Because in our organization, we may have different uh, storages. And after a second, uh, yeah, you'll see another uh, data set in the Postgres. So, uh, just to mention uh, a great thing within Marquez, the same graph can be obtained within a programmatic manner. And, uh, you know, it looks like a JSON, so it's difficult to read. But uh, you just give it a node, which is a starting point. You tell it whether it should go upstream or downstream or both and how far shall it go within the graph, and you get a graph through the API. Uh, which is, you know, it's easy to, it's nice to see the eye candy graph, but from this, you can do a lot. Uh, Maciej, I think it's your turn now. Uh, so, Pavel has told you about Spark, and I'm going to tell you more about the like, cross-system uh, possibilities that Open Lineage has. So, data engineering world is huge, right? Uh, we started from like SQL databases that are twice as old as I am. Uh, then we got the big data ecosystem, uh, Hadoop, uh, Spark, and now more data engineering is done in Python, uh, in, in Airflow, and most uh, importantly in SQL. Uh, so uh, maybe in the future we'll have like a data analysis in natural language, uh, which is a lot of uh, what people are focusing on. And each year, uh, each conference that I go to, we can see new databases, new processing engines that I never heard of. And everyone is doing cool stuff. So how to make our core premise uh, work with such a lot of systems? 
So uh, basically, uh, I'm going to tell you about the two examples that we have, and uh, then tell you globally what's our uh, approach. So in addition to Spark, we have an Airflow integration. And uh, let's just quickly look at this. There's no like DAG runs. Let's run a DAG. And uh, what it's going to do, I have to log in. I'm going to use my super secret password uh, that everyone knows. And yeah, DAG has run. We can look at it. There are some very simple transformations. But what we can also see is that there are new nodes in the graph. And we have another table, daily users, that we've created using Airflow, using a SQL operator, that also derives from the former uh, graph nodes that we've seen before from Spark. Uh, so we can do that. Uh, how do we do it? So for Spark, uh, as Pavel said, we have a thing called OpenLinear Spark Listener. Uh, and it's implementing an interface uh, called Spark Listener in, uh, in Spark. So what it gives us is the ability to listen to particular execution points uh, where things happen in, during Spark execution. And the partic some particular events, like Spark Listener job start, uh, Spark Listener job end, Spark execution SQL start, uh, notifying us not only about a moment where we are in this execution, but also give us access to Spark Logical Plan. Uh, what is Spark Logical Plan? It's basically a tree data structure uh, that describes uh, how does uh, the Spark operation look like. And the root of the node is our output point. So when we read all the data, the output, the root node, describes uh, where, the no where the data goes to, like uh, whether it's a local file, S3, or JDBC, uh, it's a root node. And leaf nodes are our data sources. So it can be some fake data, it can be a uh, hive table relation, as we can see here, it can be everything else. So if we wanted to collect table level image, we could just look at those nodes. And this is, by the way, exactly what OpenLineage did uh, for a long time. Uh, because, you know, those are the inputs that are the outputs, we can just uh, display it, right? But if we want to get a table uh, column level image, we have to look beyond that and look at all the transformation that happen inside. Uh, so, for example, here we have a project node. And this means that we took a lower dimensional uh, table, let's say, tuple, from a like, larger table. So this means that we just stop looking at some columns. So not every, never, not every column from the uh, restaurant's uh, table was used in constructing some other table. And by combining all this information, at the end, we can see what columns were used in to constructing every column in, in our output, Spark output. So uh, what are the problems with that approach? We are looking from outside to this Spark execution. And that means uh, we are using something that's not exactly a pub public API that is guaranteed to be stable and actually changes every version. So every like minor Spark version. So Spark 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, everything uh, causes us to have spend some time and uh, basically implement new things that Spark implemented. Uh, so that's not the best way, but it's a really good way to collect lineage if there's no native integration. As for native integration, let's look at how we integrate with Airflow now, or will we in a moment. So the Airflow that I shown you, uh, it's not like a uh, pro production version of Airflow. It's actually what's on Airflow main right now with one patch added in for the Postgres uh, support, actually. 
which is actually a PR right now. If, if, if the, we have any other Airflow committers uh, other than Yarek, you can go there and click Merge, and it will be actually main. Uh, oh, yeah, we have Foco also. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is what we plan to release in the next, uh, maybe next release, maybe somewhere else. But uh, how does it work? So Airflow doesn't have like a logical plan of execution because everything in Airflow is code, right? We have DAG that represents particular operations that we are doing. And there are hundreds uh, of operators, and people can create their own custom operators. Uh, so how do we make sense of that, right? We can't, or we also did, look at the operators themselves from the outside and try to figure out what they do. In some cases, it's possible. Uh, let's say we have an operator that copies from um, data from bucket to bucket. So what we do is we just get the uh, name of the source bucket, get the name of the destination bucket, create an event out of that, and send it like, uh, somewhere else. But not every operator looks like that, besides the fact that we have a lot of operators that doesn't really produce a useful lineage, like uh, Slack operator. We have others that are quite opaque for us, or rather uh, quite opaque if you look from outside. For example, we have a, a lot of uh, operators that submit jobs to something else, right? And for the Spark operator, uh, we don't know what the Spark job is, right, from April context. What you can do is you can install our Spark uh, integration, and the Spark integration will do its jobs. In some other cases, uh, for example, BigQuery, uh, they have API that we can call. So we know from Airflow what job has been just executed. Uh, and then we call the API. The API returns us the table level information, what tables were it from. But there's no column lineage, so it's not. Uh, perfectly great solution. There's also Snowflake, for example, which has a table view that we can look at. But it also uh, has some drawbacks. It's available only in the enterprise version, so if you are using standard one, you're out of luck. Uh, and there are like just the SQL jobs, right, which we've seen. Uh, so in this case, we are doing the, you know, the, the solution that we kind of uh, have to do, so we are parsing SQL. Yeah, uh, we've written a SQL parser in Rust. Uh, we've like kind of can use it from different contexts. We can use it from uh, Python. We can use it from Java because we can do a Java native library using uh, Rust. And this is the topic for actually it could be a topic for another uh, conference talk. How do you make everything work there? And it's, we know it's not perfect, it's kind of an 80-20 solution, right? Uh, so we, we've seen some cases of like successes. We can read data from Airflow from multiple different uh, contexts, but uh, it's not perfect. And like our global solution is that we want to be a standard. That's a standard. So, uh, if you are like developing a database or data processing systems, maybe in some future you will work with Open Lineage. You will implement uh, support for it, or just uh, no, allow us to get the data uh, like Spark this. And in the future, we might use this SQL parser for like another things like uh, Think SQL, because it's also not very easy to get the data from. Uh, yeah, so to sum up, the cool thing about open lineage is that we can extract column level lineage from multiple systems, as we've shown. We can correlate the results, uh, you can send it to markets, you can use the API to actually look at your data dependencies, uh, and you can use other systems that uh, work with open lineage data with 
which are collaborating with us on Open Lineage. Uh, for example, Manta, Atlan, Calibra, uh, Microsoft Purview. And another cool thing is that we are a project, uh, open source project under LFNI data, data. And this means open governance, so we're not trying to sell you a SaaS. Uh, and everyone you know, can freely come help us, uh, help shape the future of the project and get some value out of it. And so what, what we're trying to also do with Column Lineage, we are trying to draw the Column Lineage markers because having a visual representation of it is really important uh, for like uh, operational use cases, right? You can use API, but it's not everything. We want to collect automatic transformation types because this allows us to see whether like, personally identifying information has been used and, and track sensitive data usage. And also track other uh, transformation types that may like hash data or uh, mask it in some way. And for the open lineage, as I've seen, as I've said, there's an effort to integrate it natively directly in Airflow code base, uh, which hopefully will be soon. We want to work more on Flink integration that I haven't told you about a lot. And it's like very experimental stage right now. Uh, but you also can try if it fits your use cases. And we work on reference integration with some open source data catalogs. And as for you, uh, feel free to join Open Lineage Slack uh, to look at Marcus in Gitpod, talk to us, uh, come to community meeting that we have. Uh, it's on 7 p.m. Uh, our time, uh, European time, so not perfect for Europe, but uh, the project has a lot of contributors from other time zones. And going on the Open Lineage IO page, and we have a broken link here, I think. But you can go on Open Lineage IO page and take our ecosystem survey and tell you what we should focus on next. And thanks. Questions? Right. Uh, thanks, Pavel and Maciej. Uh, are there questions to Pavel and Maciej uh, from the audience here? Oh. Yes, so I have one question. Maybe, maybe I missed it, but if you, for example, do a SQL, select star. Yeah. yeah. So then you get like all the columns. Oh, so but yeah, uh, I probably missed that. So you can, we can, uh, we are in a runtime, right? We are in a, like middle of execution or after execution uh, in Postgres. So we know what the database is. We know their API. We know information schema, we can call it. And we know we can resolve the star to be a list of columns of that table. Makes sense. Very nice. Another question. I can, OK. Hi. Uh, so we have a few, uh, I don't know, special cases that I can think of where we have some teams who write transformations in pandas or polars and run it in a container which is like not really transparent to Airflow what is happening inside. Um, what kind of approach besides like, I don't know, rewriting it in SQL, uh, would you recommend to actually collect lineage in such a use case? Because that's kind of a view that I've been missing or wasn't able to figure out how to actually get that into a lineage system. So. It actually depends on the system, right? Uh, and I think I've seen uh, like prototype uh, pandas like, integration for Open Lineage. Basically, if the job is totally transparent to the Airflow, uh, we get no like job ID, no API that we can query. We can do it from Airflow, right? Uh, unless they expose something else. But the approach here, like for when you run Airflow from Spark, uh, Spark from Airflow, the other way around is to you know, use the Spark integration. And if we had a Polar's integration, then we would probably recommend to use it. And another thing that we haven't told is we have like a manual fallback that you can use in Airflow, right? Uh, 
maybe that fits your use case. We think it's great to have it automatically collected in the runtime, but uh, yeah, we understand that there are other use cases. And maybe uh, from, I can add from, from the perspective of Apache Airflow, like Open Lineage is not an Airflow solution. And right now it's being integrated into Airflow just to make use of the popularity, make use of the fact that it will be automatically collected when you use Airflow. But as much as you said, uh, Spark, Flink, uh, Pandas, Polars, I, I actually love Polars. I mean, the, the way what, I, the, what they are doing is great. So having an integration for whatever you do there in a native way, this is the next step or something that is already happening. And the big advantage of using Open Lineage in this case is that you can really connect all these sources of information. It doesn't matter if it's from Airflow or from Polar or from Spark or from Flink or whatever else. If it runs during the same processing, you will get all the data connected from all those different sources. And this is the power of Open Lineage. And uh, if there is no, like I can, uh, one question from me, because I'm, I'm really interested. Uh, are there any competitors for you in terms of the standard? Like I'm, I'm referring more to what Foco did yesterday, talked yesterday about Iceberg. There were lots of questions about Delta Lake and uh, what well, Hoodie, yeah, that's what that's the, what's, mm. what's, what's there for, for Open Lineage? So I, I can say about what differentiates, I can say the word, sorry. Uh, what's the difference between us and another uh, lineage solutions is that we are, you know, open source, open governance, and we are not, you know, the first thing you see on open lineage is not a link to enterprise solution that has better uh, results than what you can do for free. But is there, is, are there others who want, who try uh, to do similar things? There are, I think, tens or maybe even hundreds different lineage solutions. Uh, a lot of them are quite traditional. They rely on like manual data collection and display. Some of them, uh, a lot of them do this kind of post-processing where you like connect it to the database and they uh, basically look at all your tables and then maybe they have some query history or something. Uh, but as far as I can See, there's no, no, no one that really focuses on like runtime level connection and for which it's the only like o o pretty much only operating mode, right? How about standard level? Is anyone trying to set some kind of standards? Uh, maybe. I mean, there is uh, open metadata, I would say, but they also focus on like general metadata. Uh, there is data hub, but it, uh, it's also more general. Than, than us. I mean, uh, it's easy to think of a standard, but it's pretty difficult to prepare the integrations with the popular processing technologies. So, I mean, if you look at the Spark, uh, there is no other that good way to extract lineage that is cross-platform. And I think similar applies to SQL and Airflow. So, uh, you know, automatic, cross-platform, Automatic, in a sense, is done automatically and cross-platform. I don't think the other competitors are that good. More questions from the audience? Let me just see if there is... All right. So that should be it. Thank you very much. Big round of applause to Maciej and uh, Pavel.